Hello my soccer universe to a long overdue Premier League video. The last one we did was the beginning of September when I still thought I can keep up the schedule of making at least bi-weekly review videos. It's not gonna happen, but uh, I'm not gonna talk about all the nine rounds that uh, happened in between. I made some short videos uh, hitting the highlights. Instead, I want to talk a little bit more about bigger trends and then just for the last round focus a little bit more uh, on it. And I think this will may probably make a little bit of a longer video, but you know, strap in. It, it should be a fun ride of overall sharing my uh, thoughts with you. Also to New Jersey, uh, New Jersey, so after losing three teams last season, I'm back up again at the same level. So quite happy with that one as well. So, let's get started with the two things that um, have been the major talking points off the pitch. Because if you look at the league, and we'll talk about this in a little bit uh, soon, we have actually a relatively tight title race. We did not have we did not have a great relegation battle because the three promoter teams are actually probably the weakest crop in a long, long time. Although I think it's still early. Some of these teams and Luton is probably getting there. Uh, they're finding now a way to get points, whereas Burnley seems to be strangely unprepared for, for his league. And the th same thing goes for Sheffield United. However, off-field decisions in terms of points deductions might have a huge impact on that. First off, Everton decision uh, was in there and then it could also hit Chelsea and Manchester City. Talk that in a second. The other topic, of course, is uh, the VAR controversies. Yeah. We also will spend a little bit uh, time on but let's talk first about the points deductions and i wanted to make a video on the everton decision uh short shot where i said now nah, let's hold, hold off and collect a little bit thoughts because i probably will have to say a little bit more about that uh it is all because everton had bigger losses than they are allowed to by the premier league ffp rules and then hence they already knew that the um Punishment will come, you know, they had uh, with the ownership city situation, they built a new stadium, you know, then COVID came in, a, lot, a whole lot of stuff that came, came together and Everton were already a little bit of a crisis club overall. And so just as the international break got underway, they got hit with a 10 point deduction, which of course we have to first uh, say it's probably really harsh because teams in the lower leagues that have gone bust have only received a nine point deduction. So uh, I I can understand when uh, the Everton board says, yeah, this is a little bit too harsh, especially since we have been cooperating, uh, co cooperating there. Uh, the other thing, and that's what Everton fans are saying, and now why are we getting 10, 10 points and City is, gonna go, is, is, is running away and Chelsea as well, because those are the other two teams that have um, uh, judgments pending. The thing is that the Everton judgment was an easier judgment to make. There was a single charge. You have too many losses, and we came down with that. That one. Whereas for Manchester City, we have 117 or something like that. And for Chelsea, it's also not that that clear. You know, there were some uh, improprieties with transfer dealings under the Abramovich era, where uh, already during the take takeover, you know, this was self-reported in in a way. So we gotta see all about that. On the flip side. If Everton have received no points deductions, this might be actually the best time ever because of the three really weak promoted teams. Yes, the points deduction. You went from a 40% chance of getting relegated, uh, from, from a 6% chance of getting relegated, according to my model, to a 40% chance of getting relegated. And now uh, after this week's results, it did not get much better. But in a way, it comes very opportune. And I actually find the timeliness of the whole thing. Uh, it's still very much delayed because the infraction has been done for last season. Everton should have been docked points last season and then they probably would have gotten relegated. So I think some of the relegated teams uh, will have a say in that and probably also want to get some money out of, of that with another lawsuit coming. So uh, have that in mind. As for the other two, as I said, there are so many charges. Uh, it will take a while. And I think while Manchester City publicly states we want to have the judgment as soon as possible their lawyers are doing everything to delay the process because you have to call corporate just put it on on the table it's not that the premier league commission is taking all that long uh but the potential charges i think could have a major impact on a very open title race at, at the moment uh it could range from being relegated 
Pep wants to stay, even if they're in League One. Let's see about that. Uh, points deductions, title stripped, and, and so on. I don't know when this judgment will come, but when it comes, I think this might be a major, 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 major judgment. And given that they have already been really strict with Everton, I would expect a really strict judgment there as well. Potentially Juventus style. Potentially Juventus style. For Chelsea, I honestly think this will be more or less a fine and potentially a transfer ban than anything else. Because new ownership, self-reported, and, and so on. But we got to see about that. Going over to the VAR side. I mean, VAR, especially in England, it's, it's, I see it in other leagues as well where it is discussed, but not to the degree and not to the, uh, to the poor standard that it is happening in the Premier League. It has to be said like that. For me, given that the Premier League, and I'm not saying this lightly, is the best league in the world. And there's no R arguing about it. I mean, 20, 20 years ago, I would have argued. 10 years ago, I would have argued. At the moment, there's no arg argument about it. The Premier League is the best league in the world. The refereeing is not up to par. And yes, there are blunders in Italy, there are blunders in Germany, there are blunders in Spain, there are blunders in Austria, blah, 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 blah. However, not such stupid ones as in England. I mean, it starts for it that the club decided to not have goal and tech technology. That came back to bite our, our, our arsenal because I think with goal and tech technology, you would have for sure seen that whether the ball was out or not against New, Newcastle. But it's also the implementation of VAR. It is so, um, you know, I mean, it gets too micromanagey. And it actually, uh, human impulse is for a referee, I don't make the call because VAR will correct me. However, Varden says, well, the referee saw it this way. We don't need to correct that, 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 that much. And so you're uh, in a catch-22 situation where uh, you actually have a good tool, but you're not using it right. And uh, especially at the, at the beginning, not sending the referee's tool to, to the monitor. Honestly, I'd rather see a referee go to, to the monitor. We can talk about the time that it takes, and I really think it should be time barred. If it takes you more than a minute to determine whether a player is offside or not, then it's not clear and obvious and let it run. I think this is a major mistake that FIFA, FIFA made. We don't need to roll it back like that. Get it, get this decision quickly. And if, 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 if it's wrong, okay, then it, 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 it might be wrong. You have to speed up the process. However, the most glaring mistake came at the uh, Spurs-Liverpool game where Liverpool had a good goal disallowed for offside and on the first replay you can already see that this that I think it was Luis Diaz is not offside and it's is still scrapped and I was wondering am I having some warped vision I think most others as, as well well it turns out the communication between the VAR referee and the other one was so poor that the VAR referee said yeah uh, it's a good decision uh, <laughs> and he did not say it's a clear goal he just said a uh, good decision good decision blah 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 of uh, 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 what, what, what ev, 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 it was and then they cannot roll it back and this is the other thing yes we made an error you have re re restarted we have seen at the beginning at, at, at the beginning of VAR uh, that I remember a game between Milan and Parma where the game rolled on Sunday the referee whistle and gang is gone and there's a penalty game that happened two minutes before We've seen that before and this is not a problem. The problem is that humans cannot use their tools and they're using it wrong. They're using it too micromanagey because we have these shiny new tools and we can do many, many, many things. And uh, the English Premier League is probably the worst of them all. There. It has to be said and this has to be looked at. On the other side, I don't want any club statements into big conspiracies and there's a refereeing standard as well. They're all against us. That's also crap. Uh, the best thing is when those tapes were uh, released that you actually see how human the whole thing actually is. It's not the robots there. It is really human error and it made it perfectly clear that human the technology is all right. It's humans that mess it up. And in that sense, we will never have an error-free game. So let's live with it. I think we should... Take VAR a little bit back, rely more on the uh, semi-automated offside, on the goal line technology stuff, that is stuff. And then uh, look maybe into red card fouls or maybe penalty fouls where you say, okay, let's take, let the referee have a look at it at, in real time. Um, not freeze frame or so on. Huh? This is what bugs me about VAR. It is not that VAR is there. I think we need it, especially on, in this highly professionalized environment. But the way it is used is completely off. 
rent over. So let's talk a little, a little bit about the league uh, title race. Uh, first, first off, arguably we could say that at the moment it's per probably a three-way title race uh, with City still the favorite, the, the favorites, although they only second place. Arsenal lead the table with thirty, and then it's City with twenty-nine and Liverpool with twenty-eight. Uh, but Aston Villa is also up there with twenty-eight. So might they join? Spurs have now lost three uh, on a, in a row. However, all with mitigating circumstances, you know, injuries and uh, suspended players. Could they? Because they have been actually real, real fun to watch. I don't think they have really the stamina. I don't think that Manchester United will enter any title race contention. We'll talk about them in a little bit. But let's focus on the, on, on, on the tall top three. City look weirdly uh, shaky. Look weirdly shaky. We saw this in the 4-4 against Chelsea. We saw when they lost... Uh, to Arsenal, which was one of the dullest games that I can remember that Arsenal just won. It's actually among the mad matches in the top, top three, the only, only game where they have been a winner so far, uh, because on the weekend we'll talk about the CD and Liverpool only played out a 1-1 one, one draw. Uh, but I know CD also, they had uh, the loss to Wolves. So uh, overall, they don't seem as stable, but this is always the point with CD that... Yeah, in the fall, they don't look good. And then in spring, they kick on and win the championship. Liverpool have been actually really stable overall. I mean, yes, uh, they had also their points drop in there. But uh, this might be a Liverpool team, uh, Liverpool 2.0 in a way, if you like, where you can see there's something growing. Will it be a sustained title challenge? I don't quite know yet. Also, will probably depend on the European, how, how, how they handle European commitments and so on. But yeah, the point at City was admittedly lucky, but at least they got a point out there and they have had good results overall. As I said, the only loss came to Spurs, which was on a freak war decision. Arsenal sit top of the table uh, at the moment, have um, also only a single loss so, so far. Look, not as exciting and it's very... Um, how 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 to say it's not as, as exciting as last season. Uh, it looks a little bit uh, sluggish, um, but maybe this is also now Ateta taking a little bit back. There's of course the goalkeeping situation that I'm not sure how much it settles Arsenal overall. But I think that um, Arsenal look rather steady as well. They beat already City, so they got this big monkey off their back. The question is, can they sustain it? They also have like dropped points, I think, they were, uh, on occasions, you know, Spurs, Chelsea, and so on. So um, it's at this moment, I think it's really hard to say who of these three is actually the best. Uh, City actually have a very uh, weirdly shallow squad, so uh, it's really, I, I would say, it's really uh, open for now. Of course. As I said, I would expect City at one point to kick on and become an undeniable force. The question is if the other one can keep up with that. We had with Spurs and Aston Villa two teams that are really interesting challengers, I, I would say. I don't think that they will get into the title race. And they had a head-to-head -head on the past weekend where uh, Villa beat Spurs again in a crazy match. Uh, Spurs under Ange Postecoglou is a transformed side they play the high line they go forward they it's fun to watch and it was actually a great game against uh villa where uh, yeah there were a couple of offside positions because you're so at attacking i think son had three goals disallowed or some or something like that uh it might be fun uh but you will lose games with that it's not stable yet but it is fun to to watch and i think you find this renewed energy and yes you lost now three in a row but honestly better this than the draws that they have been playing under Mourinho and Conte. And as for, for Villa, I find the home form is really good. Uh, the away form is where I wonder a little bit. But they have a great striker with Oli Watt, 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 Watkins in, in there. They, uh, uh, Una Emery has put a great system. This is also a transformed club that is really hitting the next level at, at the moment. The only thing that is not keeping up with other shirts because Castori can, can, can get the SHIT together. Uh, but I think Villa could, I would say, a top five finish is definitely in there. And top five might get you Champions League. It's also a very underreported 
uh, fact about the Premier League. Now, if I look at the next set of teams, we have United and Newcastle, potentially Brighton. Brighton have have, won, have only had their first win now uh, this weekend in a long, long time, a 3-2 against Forest. It was actually a fun game. Not sure if Brighton uh, enters this conversation, but, you know, potentially Euro European spots are in, in there. But uh, United... They have not a level goal difference. For most of the time, they did not really look good. Actually, actually horrible. But then they have been on a uh, decent run of wins ever since they lost the Manchester Derby late o o October. They have won three in, in a row without being convincing. Although last weekend at um, Everton, yes, the XG spoke for Everton, but if you score a goal like Garnacho did, They're looking actually quite good. Uh, I think there's talent there. I'm not sure how much Ten Hag has his players under control, but over, over, overall, I would say United probably is the most stable of this. Newcastle has many in injuries, but stays in there. But I don't think they will hit the heights from last season because they have the addition with the Europa League. And uh, uh, it's also a little bit too combustible. And then the Tonali case, where, yeah, I think it was the transfer of the century for Milan, uh, getting the money for uh, Tonali just before he got suspended. So also a big one there. Uh, we have a few London clubs here in midfield with West Ham, Chelsea, Brent for Chelsea is a train wreck that you thought had turned it around and then they lose to Newcastle in rather embarrassing fashion uh, uh, last weekend. But, you know, we had the 4-4 uh, against uh, City in, in their absolutely crazy game, the game of the season so uh, so, so far. Uh, they also had the 4-1 at Spurs, where, yeah, Spurs played with nine many score three late. But, you know, this was a big, big, big win. They have draws at home also against Liverpool and against Arsenal. So, uh, overall, they're not... Uh, There is something there, it's just they don't have a striker up front and I don't think Nkunku is the solution to that problem as well. But I think this is a project that's building. West Ham, I have a really hard time gauging where they are. I think they are cap capable side, but I don't think they will make it. They probably for a conference league spot, not more than that. Um, and then we already enter Brentford. Yeah, I know Brian Brentford is up there with, Chel uh, with Chelsea, but mid-table team, as a Wolves, as a Surprising Palace, and as a Fulham at the moment. I think those are the teams that I would say are, def are definitely more on the mid-table. And then we enter the relegation zone. Uh, at the moment, Forest look kind of safe with 13 points and three wins. Uh, Bournemouth also seemed really, really bad, but now Iraola is getting the system going, and I think they might actually not be Im Im implicated. And so we have the four bottom teams. We talk a whole lot about Everton now. They sit on four points, uh, losing to United. Um, and have now 50% chance against Reggae, still on the fourth, uh, still on, on, on the fourth in terms of probability. Because despite Luton getting the first win uh, over uh, Crystal Palace, which is a story in itself, I would uh, argue on that increases the point spread. Now it's five points of safety for Ever Everton. Everton have been relatively good this season, and I think if they uh, can not focus on the points deduction, I think Everton will probably just about be safe, even with 10 points less, and I think this will get re reduced. Burnley, um, yes, they have a win, yes, they have, have, they have a draw, they came with huge praise, but it reminds me a little bit of Norwich, who also came with this great offensive style into the league and then went nowhere. That's where it's happening as well. And Sheffield United is also, uh, yes, Hacking Bottom is probably getting something going. And it, this is always, I think one of these three teams will probably not get relegated. And I even don't think that Everton necessarily will get relegated. Uh, it's hard to see, but um, one of these will probably in the second half of the season have figured it out. What do we need to do to not lose so much? Probably a little, little bit tighter. Remember last season, Nottingham Forest looked like done and dusted even in February. And then they went on a run. I expect one of these three teams to do it as well. Um, it's really hard to say why. At the moment, it probably seems that even lowly Luton might do it. But hey, there you go. Um, you've seen the results of pointing through. When we look now at uh, next weekend, I got some results from <laughs> last uh, weekend in this discussion in as well. 
Um, when we look at the fixture for next weekend, uh, two stick out is Newcastle against Manchester United is probably a chance for both of these to potentially enter the conversation for a Champions League spot. Uh, so, uh, But I don't think anyone could lose. And then, of course, City against Spurs. This could be a fun game uh, with many, many, many goals there as well. Um, I also want to, um, just quickly, we also had the League Cup where we had the round of 16 played uh, with major upsets, you know, teams not, no, 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 playing with their full squads, but West Ham get a big 3-1 win over Arsenal, Newcastle, a huge win over an absolutely abject Manchester United 3-0. Uh, so if you look at it, there's actually quite some big teams in the city did not even make it there <laughs> in, in into the round. So it's a wide open core competition and the draw for the quarterfinal to be played at the end of December. Uh, or oh, just just before for Christmas actually leaves leaves it open because uh, we have all Premier League teams play each other and Van Kokodai with Chelsea, Newcastle and Liverpool, where, where West Ham, the, f- the four strongest teams also play each other. Everton, Fulham, Port Vale, Middlesbrough are a little bit, um, yeah, not so great. So it's a wide open car competition. You would say Liverpool, but let's see if they play a full squad there. Hold on, talk about the Premier League and I'm just scratching the surface a, li- uh, a little bit. I could probably talk a whole lot more. Just time doesn't allow me to, which is a little bit sad, to be honest. But let me know what you thought about my thoughts on the league so far. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.